Hi everyone, welcome to my first actual ASMR video. I recently did an introduction video basically just to say who I was and I'm here. So this is going to be my first softly spoken video. I um, hope you enjoy it and that you get some relaxation from it, maybe a couple of laughs and, uh, and hopefully go to sleep. Uh, my first video, as the title says, is 20 fun facts about New Zealand. I know a lot of you, or most of you, that subscribe to me thus far are overseas. So I'm hoping that this will give you a little bit of insight into our small end of the world. Okay, number one. Contrary to popular belief uh, by the other nations of the world, New Zealand is not part of Australia, um, otherwise known as Aussie. We collectively share the name Australasia, of the Aussies. However, although we stick together in strife and war and things like that, um, we're always giving each other stick. In other words, teasing each other. Um, and it's usually things like sport or uh, who wants Russell Crowe. Long story short, uh, Russell Crowe was born in Wellington, New Zealand. Apparently he wants to be an Australian though, but they can have him if they like. Not a worry. Uh, on the most count, you know, we do really um, get on very well with our Australian ex-convicts. They are ex neighbours. Um, the story behind that is um, back in the early 1900s, um, the prisons in England were overrun, jails were overrun with convicts. So um, King William at the time decided that it would be a good idea to ship them all off to Australia and colonise it. So... Yeah, that's the reason for that one. Number two. New Zealand consists of two main islands, the North Island and the South Island, and has a smaller island at the bottom of the South Island called Stewart Island. They're the three main islands. There are other islands, lots of other islands off the side. Um... Most of the population lives in the North Island, um, and that is up mainly in Auckland, which is the largest city, which has over 1.4 million people. Okay, number three. The word Kiwi has uh, three meanings in New Zealand. Firstly, it is the name of our uh, native bird. Um, which is the only bird in the world to have its nostrils at the end of its beak. And the reason for this is the kiwi is nocturnal, comes out, sleeps during, in a burrow during the day, and comes out and forages for grubs and so forth through the undergrowth in the, in the what we call bush, or you call woodlands or forests overseas, at night time. And secondly... Um, a kiwi, which you probably all know, is a fruit. We call it kiwi fruit in New Zealand. Um, I think a lot of you just call it kiwi. The Americans do anyway, know that. Uh, <laughs> which was originally, um, the fruit was originally known as a Chinese gooseberry, if you didn't know that. So don't ask me why it got changed, but it did. And thirdly, and probably, I suppose most importantly, a kiwi is a New Zealander. Mwah. <laughs> Number four, the logo of the Royal New Zealand Air Force is also a kiwi, which is quite ironic really, as the kiwi is a flightless bird, he does say. Number five, only 5% 5 
of New Zealand's population is human, the rest are animals. Um, I think that 5% can be debated sometimes. Um, I don't know if you've ever watched a rugby football match, which is uh, the main sport in New Zealand, but yeah, it gets a bit violent at times. <laughs> Number 6. New Zealand is similar in size to the United Kingdom. However, our population is just over 4 million, compared to their 63 million. So I guess after the 1800s, uh, when most of the English immigrated to New Zealand, uh, they'd had enough of us. Maybe they didn't like our, our earthquakes and volcanic eruptions and things. No idea. But anyway, we like our peace and quiet anyway. Not to say that you're not all welcome to come. Stay, visit. Take a game. We don't mind. We're pretty friendly. Number seven. In 2001, uh, when they had a census, a New Zealand census, 53,715 people listed their religion as Jedi. Now, I'm assuming these folk were all um, gunning for the role on the uh, Star Wars Episode 3 uh, Attack of the Clones, which... Uh, a New Zealand actor, Timur Morrison, uh, was featured. Either that or the force is strong in New Zealand. Number eight. Speaking of films, Lord of the Rings was entirely filmed in New Zealand and pumped around $200 million into the country's economy. So thank you guys for supporting Lord of the Rings. We, we enjoy that money. Somebody did, wasn't me. Number nine. The sport of bungee jumping originated in New Zealand by AJ Hackett um, as a business in 1988. And not long after they started doing bungee jumping in Queenstown, which is a beautiful place in the South Island, uh, which a lot of um, tourists visit, has a lot of um, unique sports out there, let's put it that way, and beautiful beautiful mountains and so forth, and skiing, a lot of skiers from the Northern Hemisphere come and um, ski down there when you're having your winter up there. But anyway, getting back to dun jumpy, uh, bungee jumping, sorry, say it right, um, I guess uh, it's one way of repositioning the vertebrae in your spine. Not that I've ever tried it. I guess also we had to beat the Aussies with something that, uh, when it was thrown away, would come back, other than the boomerang. Yeah. Uh, talking about long drops, <laughs> bungee's a long drop from the ground. Um, long drop is another name for a, a open toilet. Um, yeah. Uh, usually for um, people that tramp up in what we call the bush, you'd call forests over there, wherever you're from. Um, yeah, it's a um, toilet that's a long hole in the ground with uh, three sides around it, if you're lucky, with no door normally. I remember one time going up in the bush and uh, there was an absolutely amazing view from this uh, long drop <laughs> with no door and you looked quite right across the valley and all I could think of is some deer hunter on the other side with a really good scope. Anyway, that's another story. Anyway, getting back to the long drops. <laughs> um, the Sky Tower in Auckland, which is featured up behind me there in the photo, is the largest sorry, start again, is the tallest freestanding structure in the Southern Hemisphere. It is 328 metres high, for those of you that deal in feet, that's 1,076 feet. Um, and yes, we even try and hurdle ourselves off there at 85 kilometres per hour, 
on a base jump on a wire cord. Uh, there goes the flightless uh, Kiwis uh, try and show that we can fly again. Number 10. Which brings me to another bit of uh, thrill-seeking information. This one has a bit of a dark side on it, sorry. It's my dark humour coming out. More people die in New Zealand each year from playing lawn bowls than scuba diving. Now, uh, my theory on this is that um, I don't know of many of 80-year-old uh, scuba divers. Uh, however, given that um, our country is no more than 128 kilometres from the centre, that's 79 miles um, from any um, any part of the sea, so we're not terribly far from the sea, I think, uh, yeah, it doesn't give the 80-year-olds very much excuse not to go scuba diving, we have plenty of water. Number 11. There are no snakes in New Zealand, either native or introduced. Thank goodness you guys can keep them. However, we have the world's largest flightless parrot. I don't know what it is for New Zealand and flightless birds, but hey, someone has to have them. The oldest reptile, which is a tuatara, which is a rather interesting looking lizard. The biggest earthworms and the smallest bats. Maybe the earthworms are really snakes um, in sheep's clothing. Speaking of which, page. Number 12. We also have 60 million sheep. And no, I'm not trying to pull the wool over your eyes. <laughs> Number 13. Having said that, you would think that would be overrun with uh, sheep fertiliser. <laughs> but the Blue Lake in Nelson Lakes National Park, which is at the top of the South Island, has the clearest water in the world. Number 14. While we're on the subject of lakes, in the middle of the North Island lies Lake Taupo. It was formed by a crater from the largest known eruption in the world 26,500 years ago. Obviously we had some really good timekeepers. According to fact, the dust from that eruption could be seen in China. So I guess, sorry China, we can uh, lay claim to the biggest fireworks displays as well. Number 15. New Zealand is the first country in the world to see the sunrise each day. Um, so at least we're first in the world with one thing. Uh, I know a number of my ASMR friends that I talk with on a regular basis think it's kind of odd that I live in the future. Um, Sadly, though, I haven't been able to give them any winning lotto numbers yet. Sorry, guys. Number 16. In 1990, New Zealand became the first country in the modern world to appoint a official wizard. And no, it wasn't Harry Potter, Dumbledore or Voldemort. Our wizard spent 40 years entertaining crowds in the square in Christchurch. Um, which is the largest, second largest city in New Zealand and the largest city in the South Island. Um, sadly for Christchurch, on the 22nd of February 2011, they had a very damaging earthquake, pardon me, which was 6.3, um, but it was very shallow, and um, 180 five people lost their lives and there were seven thousand that were injured um, the buildings had already been taken to task really the year before um, there was a 7.1 earthquake but it wasn't centered in the city center it was out um, from from the city 
Um, no one died in that earthquake, amazing enough, but it did happen in the middle of the night, so everyone was in bed, but it did weaken the, the structures. Um, yeah, so um, thoughts for all those that had family that perished. It was uh, quite devastating. Most of them were in one building that collapsed, so that was very sad. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> getting back to that... <laughs> visit of ours. Um, once the square was damaged and the central city was locked off for quite some time, the wizard decided to retire. Um, I don't know, but uh, he might have actually gone to work at Hogwarts as the Defence Against the Dark Arts teacher. Number 17. On a happier note, another attraction in a South Island City, which is the second largest city down there, Dunedin, which is near the bottom of the South Island. There is a, um, there is a street there called Baldwin Street, which is the steepest road um, in the world. It has a gradient of 1 in 2.86 at its steepest section, which is a 38% grade. Now, if you know anything about anything, you'll understand what I'm talking about. But uh, Baldwin Street holds a Cadbury Jafferas. Now, Cadbury obviously being the chocolate company. Um, they had a factory down there. I don't know if it's still running or not. Sorry, I should have found that out first before I got my facts. Um, but yeah, most of it's I've made off offshore now. Um, but Jaffers is a orange flavoured coated chocolate, what we call lollies here in New Zealand, um, typically most of you will call them candy or sweets, but yeah, if you come to New Zealand and someone offers you a lolly, uh, just take it, it's nothing bad, <laughs> but anyway, getting back to the Jaffa race, page, the Jaffa Race consists of, or the last one they had, consists of three races. And it is where they send down from this steep street 25,000 Jaffas. And they all have numbers on them. And the first one to get to the bottom obviously wins. Um, people pay a dollar per Jaffa. And the funds raised from it go to charities in New Zealand, which is really cool and a fun day out for everyone apparently one of these years i'll get down there to see it that should be quite hilarious number 18 uh, given that we're in the southern hemisphere christmas falls in summertime so while you in the northern hemisphere are freezing your tootsies off and uh, roasting chestnuts by an open fire uh, we're getting some boot at the beach or sitting on our deck uh, having a barbecue. Number 19. For those of you that don't know, New Zealand was the first major nation to have a universal suffrage. In other words, Kiwi chicks got sick of the Kiwi blokes being in charge of everything and... Uh, having the vote for who was in Parliament. So we kicked up a merry stink, and, um, yeah, we've never looked back since. Kiwi chicks are quite bossy. Sorry, but we are. <laughs> Number 20. Lucky last. Um, just to prove a point, and I love animals, so I like this story, but just to prove a point, two New Zealand rescued dogs were taught to drive a car around a track just to prove the intelligence of shelter animals. Um, however, I'm glad they just stuck to the track because uh, as dogs are meant to be colour blind, I don't think they'd do too well in the city with the traffic lights. Well, that's it folks. Um, I hope you enjoyed this little insight into our country. <laughs> uh, if you're still awake, I hope that you were entertained. And if you're not, it must have been that you were busy counting those 60 million sheep. So, um, yeah. Sweet dreams, folks.
sleep well.